Hey guys, my name is Kian Hushman, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new plugin from Neural DSP, the Archetype Cory Wong. Let's have a look. Now, I know what you're thinking. This plugin is definitely not what you were expecting in terms of what Neural DSP would release. This is a very, very different plugin from what they usually offer, which is always a good thing. So in terms of tones, Neural DSP is probably best known for stuff like the Fort and Nameless or the Omega or the Archetype Pliny, Archetype Nolly, stuff that's really like metal prog focus with some clean and crunch elements. But this one is like a fully fledged Archetype plugin that really focuses on blues, jazz, funk, all that stuff, which is really nice. If you guys don't know who Corey Wong is, he's a really well-renowned jazzy, bluesy, funky type of guitarist. He's really well known in that type of scene, as well as being known for his solo projects and his artist project in Wolfpack. Given that Corey Wong is really well known for that funky bluesy type of sound, I had a go at doing it myself with this demo song. So before we get into that, if you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you see or hear. If you want to see more of this stuff, plug-in demos, covers, reviews, all that stuff, definitely subscribe because I will not be stopping. Also, if you guys like the demo song and you want the tabs, the individual stems, as well as the unprocessed DIs and unprocessed drums for the beginning song, definitely check out the Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description. But enough of that, let's just get straight into it and see what it sounds like in a mix. And here it is. So this is the brand new plugin from Neural DSP, the Corey Wong Archetype. And as you can tell straight away, it's a little bit different to what Neural DSP usually offers. Um, in the past, we've seen stuff more like for prog, for metal, for really extreme styles of metal, but this one has gone the complete opposite direction. While other plugins, maybe like the Pliny or the Nolly, had cleaner aspects to it, they weren't really as full-fledged as this. So before we get into it, the main controls on the top of the plugin are input controls, so you can kind of see your input gain into the actual plugin. You have a noise gate, um, a stereo and mono mode, so if you want those really like delayed ambient type of tones, you can flick it on stereo and it will feed stereo into your door. Or if you're playing standard light, it will feed stereo into your monitors. Um, over something which is default on high, as well as a preset loader where you can make your own presets and save them, as well as import other ones. As you can see here, I've made my own presets, which I'll showcase a little bit later, as well as an output control. And on the bottom left, if you haven't caught it already, is MIDI control. So if you have a MIDI pedal, you can control this plugin in any way you want pretty much. And a built-in tuner, which is really, really nice. And when you load up the plugin, this is the first thing that you hear. Really transparent, clean sound, which is super, super nice. So going through all the plugin sections individually, you get a wah pedal section, which is a first for Neural DSP. And it's really cool because it does have an auto wah if you don't have a MIDI controller. But if you do have a MIDI controller, this does have MIDI capabilities. Um, so you can definitely hook it up and try it yourself. But for me, I don't have that at the moment. So having the auto wah on is pretty cool. Straight after the wah, you have a pedal section with four pedals that go before the amp. So you have the postal service, uh, the compressor, a green style tube screamer, and then a little bit of thick and overdrive. Now, my favorite by far is this postal service one because it is so funky. <laughs> Obviously with the controls like range, sensitivity, attack and decay on this postal service pedal, you can get really intricate and dial it in exactly the way you want for like any type of style, which I'll showcase a little bit later with a preset that I made that you actually heard in the demo song. Moving on, you have the compressor, which has a little bit more control than other compressor pedals that Neural DSP offers. For example, in the Nolly, you only get basically just the compression setting and then the level setting, whereas this one, you get a tone and blend knob, which is really nice. So you can blend in the compressed tone. You can kind of get a bit duller, get a bit brighter with the tone knob as well. It's just really good to have. Moving on to the Tuba, a green style overdrive, very, very typical. Um, you have a drive, tone, level, nothing new here. Um, but the big overdrive is a little bit thicker with the same control. So just to showcase the difference between the two, I'm going to set them all at noon. And I'm going to play a little bit with the Tuba and then I'll switch over to the big overdrive just so you guys can hear the difference. So with no overdrive pedals engaged,
So with the tuba engaged. And then the big rig overdrive engaged. So moving on to the head section of the amp, as you can see, there's three different types of heads you can choose from. I'll go through them individually. So the first one is a DI Funk console, where if you turn off the cab section, it basically just acts as a reamping unit, which is really nice. So you can set your compression on your DIs, your tube saturation, high and low pass, and then things like where you want your low and mids and highs to sit, as well as how much you want to accentuate them, which is really nice. Moving on to the clean machine, as you can see here, it does have a bright switch. Um, one thing I did notice with this bright switch as opposed to other newer DSP offerings like the Nolly and I think the Pliny does have a bright switch on the amp is that um, especially with the Nolly when you flick the bright switch on it does introduce a little bit of noise but with this one there was no extra noise added which is a really really nice touch and it, all it literally did was brighten up your signal without adding in more noise that would come through the amp and stuff like that so I really really enjoyed that. Um, as for controls you have your volume, bass, mids, treble, presence and output level so very standard clean machine, it is what it is. Now going on to the third amp, the Amp Snob Amp. Now this is probably, in my opinion, the most versatile out of all the ones in the plugin. Um, as you can see, same controls as the last one as the clean machine, but you do get an extra master knob here as well as a drive switch. Now I'll just do a quick demo comparison between having the drive switch off and having it on. So drive switch off. Drive switch on. As you can see, it does add a little bit of drive to your tone and kind of makes it a little bit crunchy. Comparing this drive with the other stuff in newer DSP plugins like the Crunch Amp in the Nolly or the Pliny for example, um, I felt like this one was a little bit more fuzzier. It's not as articulate as maybe like the Pliny and not as smooth as the Nolly. They're both pretty smooth as it is, whereas this one is like really, really hot rodded, really in your face and you notice that straight away. If you turn the bright switch on with the drive, it does get a little bit more bitey. So going on to the equalizer section, as you can see, all the equalizers are individual to each amp. So if I go on the first head, you can see that it's completely flat. Um, if I go on the middle of the clean machine, it's got a little bit of stuff going on. Whereas if I go on the, um, the amp snob amp, it's got just slight variation in EQ. That's default when you load up the plugin, but you can manipulate that in any way you want. So for example, if I was doing like a completely clean signal and I wanted really crystally cleans, maybe I'd boost up 16K and maybe a little bit of 8K just to really bring out the high end in guitar. If I wanted a crunchier sound, maybe I'd go on the amp snob, flick the drive on, and if I wanted to take out some of that low mid woof, maybe I'd cut out a little bit of 500. Or if I just didn't want it to be too ear picky, I'd take out some 4K, which has already been done here. There's so many things you can do, especially with the fact that there's one EQ for each amp, as opposed to having the one EQ controlling all amps. Moving on to the cab section. Now, if you've used any other newer DSP plugins before, this would be very, very familiar to you. So you do get six mics, and I've been told that it's been tracked with 600 different IRs that are all working together in any way you can manipulate it. So that's also a really nice touch. So quickly going through the mics that you get in the plugin, you get a Dynamic 57, a Dynamic 421, a Condenser 414, a Condenser 184, a Ribbon 121, and a Ribbon 160, as well as having the ability to load up your own custom IRs, which is a really nice touch. Also, you can have two mics on at the same time, and you can pretty much manipulate them in any way you want. Like I said, they've used over 600 IRs, so with that you can have it far away from the speaker, close to the speaker, kind of drifting towards the side or having it right over the middle of it. Um, you can set the levels of each mic, pan them left and right, phase inversion. There's so many different things you can do with this cap section and it's really, really nice. So going on to the last page of the plugin, as you can see, it's a delay and reverb pedal, which you might think to yourself, oh, whatever, pretty standard delay and reverb pedal, blah, 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 but it's not because with the delay pedal, you get a dual delay. So you get the left side and right side individually. So for example, the default is set at a quarter delay um, on the left side and then every eighth note delay on the right side, as well as being able to have like low and high pass control feedback mix, pretty standard. And if you don't want the dual delay, you can just flick it on the single and just have a normal delay. The reverb pedal is also a little bit different. As you can see, it has the dry and wet control, a decay for how much you want it to reverb, as well as a low and high pass. But there's a little button here that has a shimmer effect. So now if I turn this on, 
I should be getting a really nice shimmer. And if I have it off, just get the reverb, no shimmer. So if you want those really ambient, really crystally clean, washy type of tones, having the shimmer on helps with that a lot, which I'll showcase in a preset that I made a little bit later. So now I'll just go through the presets that I made. So as you can see, the first one is called Almost because it's almost that typical like modern metal plugin um, sound that I would go for. So as you can see, the Tube Screamer is engaged with all the knobs turned on high, which I don't usually do. However, I am using the drive amp without the drive engaged. Now, the reason why I did that for like a modern metal tone, you might think, oh, I put the drive on, obviously. Well, I like the drive that came out of this Tube Screamer more so than the drive that was built into this amp for this type of tone. So I figured it would be better off to turn the drive all the way up, tone all the way up, level all the way up, and kind of just feed into this like clean section of the crunch amp, if that makes sense. And this is what I managed to get it sounding like. <laughs> So as you can tell, it's almost there in terms of getting that modern metal sound, but I actually really enjoy this type of tone for like, if you're dialing the gain back just a little bit, maybe for like a pop punk or like a, a math rock type of tone, it's actually really nice. Like for example, if I was playing something like this. Something like that, this tone is really, really nice. So now going on to the droplets preset. Now, as you can see, this is a very effects focused preset because everything else here, I haven't really touched. So like the pedal section is the same as the default. Clean machine with default settings. Equalizer, I haven't touched at all. Neither have I with the cab section. So it's basically just focusing on the effects after the fact. That's why I called it the droplets preset. Now, if you've listened to Rain by Rob Scallon, it's kind of following that similar kind of thing where you have the eighth note dotted delay, as you can see here. Uh, single mode turned on, which if you haven't noticed, it only activates on the time left, but that does not mean that it only goes through the left speaker, the delay. It does go straight through the middle when you're on the single channel. Um, high and low pass set moderately. I haven't really touched that too much. Feedback on halfway, so you get around like four or five repeats. Now moving on to the reverb section, shimmer is not on for this one and the wetness isn't too much. I don't want it to be really, really washy. I kind of want to hear the notes going on underneath. Um, that's why decay isn't that high either. And high and low pass, I haven't touched it all to be honest. So this is what it sounds like. Very simple preset, but very, very effective. You guys get the idea. Going on to the next preset, Spuckling, which is what it is. It's a very sparkly preset. Um, tube saturation kind of dipped down just a little bit just so it's not getting too um, saturated. High pass all the way. I don't want any low frequencies coming in. Um, as, as you can see here, lows have been dipped, mids have been dipped, and highs have been pushed all the way on the 4K. Um, going on to the equalizer section, 500 has been dipped quite considerably to get rid of that like low mid woofle. And then 8K and 16K are pretty much like pushed up as high as they can go almost. Um, 16K is at 12 decibels higher and 8K is at 7.7, .7, which is still very, very high. The cap section I haven't touched. I really like the way it sounded, so I just left it the way it was. And um, with the Ribbon 121 mic, it kind of gives a little bit of thickness to it um, as opposed to using something maybe like a, a 57, but the Ribbon 121 is really nice for clean tone, so that's why I like using it. Going on to the reverb section now, delay is engaged, but it's not really doing too much. The mix is very, very low and the feedback is very low. So it's kind of just subtly there in the background, but the reverb is very, very prominent. The wet control is pretty much at halfway, which means that it's very in your face. Decay is set very, very high. Shimmer is on and I have dipped forward the low pass and the high pass. So you let in a little bit more of those frequencies, but basically this just acts as a preset where you can kind of play that lead gen ambience type of stuff like this. So 
So moving on to the next preset, the Torrential Droplets preset, which is the exact same as the Droplets preset, except that the reverb is considerably higher and everything's kind of a little bit more washy, kind of takes up the whole spectrum a little bit more. So if I play the same thing, you can tell it's much, much thicker than just the normal Droplets preset. With the Droplets preset, you can hear the notes coming through very clearly. Everything is very articulate, whereas this one, it is much more washy. So moving on to the next preset, the Wah 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 preset. Now this was the tone that you heard in the very beginning of the demo song that now, as I was mentioning before, with the range, sensitivity, attack, and decay knob on the postal service pedal, you can dial them in a way that really matches the playing style, the tempo, the feel of the song, and the general articulations of whatever you're playing. So I dialed it into where it would fit with this type of style. As you can tell, the pedal's kicking in on like certain sections of that riff, depending on how I play it. Which I feel like is the perfect way for that riff that I've dialed in. Nothing too much going on in the rest of the preset apart from that one pedal, um, but I really do enjoy the way that that pedal sounds. And to be honest, when I first got the plugin, I was just jamming on this one pedal for like an hour, just like mucking around and playing like Seinfeldy um, bass lines on my guitar and stuff like that. It was super fun. And then the last preset that I made was a preset called You Like Jazz, which is just the lead tone from the demo song that you guys heard before. So basically the only things that are going on in this preset that are different from the norm are the third amp with the drive on, all knob set at noon pretty much, maybe in mids dip back just a touch and present dip back just a little bit. Um, everything at noon sounds really good for this amp. Um, the pedal, I don't have the tube screaming gauge or anything, it's literally just the drive tone coming out of the last amp. Um, compression on, equalizer I haven't touched, cap section I haven't touched, um, but the effects section I have added just a tiny, tiny bit of reverb just to give it a little bit of separation from the rhythm guitars in the song, as well as adding a little bit of delay. And as you can see, it kind of just acts like a really nice, like slightly driven jazz tone. So yeah, that's pretty much all the bells and whistles that you get in this preset as well as how I used it. So just to give a quick recap, you get the wah pedal, the four pedals before the amp, the postal service, the compressor, the green tube screamer, as well as a big rig overdrive, three different types of amps before a nine band equalizer that is individual to each amp, a cab section with six different mics with over 600 IRs recorded, as well as the delay and reverb pedal that has a built-in shimmer as well as a nice effect of the dual delay. If you guys want to try this out yourself, new DSP do offer a 14 day trial period where you can trial this plugin for 14 days absolutely free and with no timeouts, no kind of restrictions, nothing. It's pretty much the whole plugin for free to try for 14 days, which is really nice. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe. And if you like this video at any time, definitely leave a like and tell me what you liked about it in the comments. Again, thanks to the new guys for letting me try this early and thank you to the Patreons for supporting the channel. If you guys want to support me and what I do, definitely check out the Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.